Children's Podcast. It's been a while. My name is Leah, also known as Eventual on Ravelry and Miss underscore LJV on Instagram. Today is Saturday, November 3rd. It's, it's a day. Today is November 9th. That was my guess, but I wasn't sure. So, the reason why it's been a while, again, I think another month, is because um, I got pretty busy in October and then got sick at, like, I swear, every single year for the last three, four years. Uh, I get sick the first weekend in November and I'm out of commission for Halloween, which a lot of the time I'm not actually that sorry about. Um, I feel like everybody has so many Halloween parties that it gets really overwhelming anyway, and I just don't, I just want to stay home. <laughs> Especially because it ends up being cold and rainy or snowy, so yeah. I got my maker mug again, I drink out of this all the time. So does Steve. We kind of uh, steal it from each other. <laughs> um, I do have a little bit of a stuffy nose, so sorry if I sound uh, a bit congested. I'm wearing my Boy Lollipop by Nancy Ricci uh, of Getting Pearly With It. Um, I'm also wearing um, my socks, my Inner Jiffy socks, knit in a gradient from Knit Circus. They are so comfy cozy. <sighs> Speaking of which, they are, I, I don't believe that the yarns that um, Knit Circus dyes as a gradient for socks are actually fingering. It doesn't say exactly, but it, it's, well, it's like a, it seems like a little thicker fingering. And, um, uh, my so-called handmade life commented on a post of stockings that she knit that I had commented on being like, oh my god, the colorway is amazing, the pattern is amazing, and she said she couldn't recommend uh, worsted weight stockings or socks enough, and I feel like this thicker fingering sort of lends to that. It is very comfy, very squishy, super enjoyable. Well, I should... <laughs> I should get going. I have a lot to talk to you about today. So I have a little list. It's not a super long list, but that's because I wrote down things that I know I'm going to talk a lot about. The first thing I'm going to start with is finished objects. The first finished object that I have for you are Steve socks. You will notice that this is my sock form for my foot and that I have Steve's sock on the leg and it is still too big. <sighs> my friend Sean is still working on making a, um, a sock form for Steve. Actually, I think she probably has them finished, but she lives in Madison, which is four hours away from where I live. And yeah, so I have two socks. They are opposites. They are by, they are um, Charles um, Marino. trying to think of what what she calls them well this is Charles anyway and these are polar opposites they were from a club colorway uh, for Miyazaki or Studio Ghibli and this colorway is Castle in the Sky and it did come with this mini that is on the heels toes and cuffs so these are shorty socks this is Steve's first pair of shorty socks that I knit him and here's one I did um, eye partridge heel. And here's the other one. I think I showed this one last time. I was finished or almost finished last time. And then I just did this whole thing um, over a weekend. So yeah, it's really exciting. He's all, They're all kind of slouchy because he's worn them a bunch of times already since I have knit them. It's very exciting to knit these giants. I mean like, like 
look at how big they are. They're so big. <laughs> He's got really big feet. So I felt really accomplished when they are finished, were finished. And even though, even though his feet are this big, oh, I don't have it with me. I have enough yarn for sure um, in both colors to knit myself a matching pair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have to use uh, probably a different yarn for the heels, toes, and cups. So there, there's probably enough maybe for um, the cuff for sure at least. Maybe the heel or maybe the toes. I have to double check, but for sure the actual like colors I could knit myself my own pair of socks and then we could be matching cute. I knit those on size ones um, nine inch circulars. I don't think that they're child. That's not true. Okay, let me back up. I knit part of it on nine inch circulars. <laughs> Um, and yeah, cause the cable is like green or something. And then, um, I do have a 12 inch, uh, size one circular in a bamboo. And it's the only one I've been able to find. And I bought it at Sousier in Verona, Wisconsin. It was perfect for knitting when, after you, um, so I do top down socks. This is just a shorty, this is not a pattern. It's just a vanilla sock basically. And um, after you get to the heel turn, you have all these stitches in the gusset, right? And you have, so, you know, you have extra, extra, extra stitches and then you decrease down to the original to do the rest of the foot. And so I use the 12 inch circular for here um, when there were additional stitches. And then um, I think I just continued using the 12 inch for the rest of the socket until I got down to the the toes section and that worked really well for his socks because again his feet are so big around it's okay I think to use the nine inch circulars but I, I had noticed that the yarn and I think I mentioned this on my last episode I noticed that the yarn or that the the circumference then of course was not that much bigger than nine inches and his foot is definitely bigger than that around. So the 12 inch circumference worked out really well. So I recommend that if you are knitting socks for a large footed human. Moving on, my next finished object is a hat by Hunter Hammerson. So this hat pattern is called Correlation. It is part of a set. There is a matching set or matching pattern for mitts that is called causation and I do have enough I think for um, maybe shorty mitts for causation um, this yarn is Ansela Cricut in um, colorway gumball it's a DK yarn if you've never knit a pattern by Hunter Hammerson uh, the way that she structures them isn't by mm, yarn weight exactly or even by needle size she gives you gauges so um, so you figure out how many stitches per inch that you are knitting and um, she has it's like a little table and then it has like um, if you're getting this many stitches per inch knit this cast on this number of stitches and then follow that part of the pattern so that's how she does her sizing and I think it works out really well um, interestingly I don't know if it's the yarn or if it's the way that I knit, but for the hat, she said that you should be, like she has a little image on there that says if you, once you're able to kind of close the needles at the top of your head, that that means you're finished. For me, when I did that, um, the hat ended up being a lot longer than it should have been. Um, and I think it's because my head is maybe more round than it is tall. and. So it was like, so like on the top, maybe it's like wider on top than maybe most people's heads, but not as like tall. So um, this hat is definitely quite long. Um, it is cabling. It does have cables all the way up, but they are so well structured. And then um, of course the top of the hat, I cannot see in this um, 
in this yarn but the top of the hat it like perfectly works out and it's really nice so yeah if I put it on just the way it is it's pretty long right oh, yeah yeah just a little so I just um, I made the brim long enough because I do like folded brims so I folded the brim up oh, love this hat it has been a perfect great fall hat very squishy very comfy um, get a lot of compliments on it. People really like it. So it's already getting to be to winter and it's too cold, getting to be too cold for this hat, but it was fantastic for the fall season, which I feel like in Minnesota we have had the best autumn fall since as long as I can remember. Sorry about all the coughing. I, like I said, I'm feeling kind of congested and stuffy. I will try to edit out as many of those as I can, but I was in the middle of talking as I often am. But yeah, so anyway, this has been a great, great fall hat. And yeah, it's not too tight, it's not too loose. It fits wonderfully. It's kind of annoying how <laughs> it really speaks to knowing your gauge. Those are the only two like new actual finished objects that I have, but I have a couple bonus finished objects that I really want to talk about on this podcast. So I started podcasting in January of this year, uh, in 2019. And so that means that everything that I have knit before that, I have not talked about on this podcast. But when I'm thinking about what do I wear all the time and what are the knits that get a lot of use, there are a few items that I really wanted to share with you guys. The first of which is, is called uh, the Till Death Mitts. The Till Death Mitts are a pattern by Stephanie Lotvin, also known as Telly Bean Mitts, and it was a mystery knit along that I did um, last October. And you will notice that they are completely reversible. These are, they were knit um, from the cup up up and they started with, well, so it, it was a mystery knit along, but there were a lot of options. So one option that you could do was do a Latvian braid. So you can see this is where they joined, but here, here's the Latvian braid. And then you could do a couple different versions of the color work on the way up. I can't remember. It had something to do with the accents. And uh, I do remember that there was something where you could add beads and I definitely, one, didn't want to do beading with all this color work, but I, cause I've never done beading before, but also because I don't want my mitts to have that texture on it, if that makes sense. Like I don't want it on my hand, um, on the back or the front. Again, I think there was options to have it on the back only or both. <sighs> but yeah, so I mean, these gloves are so detailed and they're kind of ratty looking because I wear them all the time. But they have such good detail. Look at that thumb detail. And look at that. Look at that. For not knowing what I know now about color work, I feel like I did a pretty good job. And yeah, I mean, even in the really, really cold Minnesota winters, I wear these constantly. Yeah, I love these gloves. The yarn is Sun Valley Fibers. Uh, it was the kit that actually came with the Mystery Knit Along pattern. So I had bought the the kit exactly as is. A lot of people did really um, interesting and cool variations and picked really cool yarn combinations. But I mean, like, how could you say no to this color combination? It's so vibrant and so amazing. Um, I don't, I do not remember if this was Sun Valley's Merino Cashmere Nylon or Merino Cashmere, cashmere Silk. But it is really um, shimmery, so maybe so. I can't remember, but I really wanted to show these off because I wear them every single day. <laughs> the last finished object that I want to talk to you about 
is a scarf that I knit for a friend of mine. So when I was more beginning knitting, like I shouldn't even say beginning knitting. So I would say in 2009, I knit my very first scarf for Steve for, um, I don't know if it was for Christmas or just because I really felt like it, but up until that point, like 2009 is when I kind of consider my knitting going from kind of casual, wanting to learn how to knit, to like being dedicated to knitting. And then in 20, uh, winter 2012 uh, slash 2013 was when I like became like a serious, a dedicated knitter, like where I really wanted to like be knitting all the time. And in, tw in 2012, 2013, 2014, I knit and sold scarves primarily on Etsy. Scarves, uh, fingerless gloves, and uh, cup, like wrist cuffs. And because I didn't have a lot of things that I necessarily wanted to knit for myself, I really liked knitting things for other people and selling them. And people still comment and ask about my scarves when I'm in public and they, you know, get my email and they want me to make them scarves. Um, part of the problem is that now I feel like I maybe wouldn't sell a scarf for the price that I was selling them at through 2015 or so. I kept them very consistent between 60 and $70 because I wanted people to be able to afford them even though I know that they were worth a lot more. But in the same vein, I would choose one friend a year to knit a scarf for. And I think I've mentioned this before, but um, one of those years, one of those scarves was for my friend Noah. So uh, he happens to be here this weekend and so I get to, and he's wearing his scarf and he rethanked me for it and wanted me to make it clear on the podcast that he loves the scarf <laughs> and is very grateful for it. For my part, I wish I had made it a little bit longer. He's a very tall guy. He's, um, he's like tall and big. And so um, I had like a formula for how I, how I knit the scarves and how much yarn I used. And so I just use that same amount and I, I do wish I made it a little longer but without further ado the Mega Man scarf for Noah that I made for him so <laughs> what I felt like made me more of an intermediate knitter was because I knit these scarves they are double knit they I mean they are a tube and then I would duplicate stitch images on and you can see that I'm pretty good at duplicate stitch um I figured out like how, how to do it correctly so that the yarns didn't get lost in each other that, so that the images sit nicely on top of the scarf. Orange is his favorite color so he really wanted it orange so yeah if I put it on on me It is pretty long, right? Yeah. So it like fits me normal, right? Like goes all the way down to my belly button, including the little fringe. But on him, <laughs> it maybe goes to like here-ish. So you can see why I only did scarves once a year for my friends. And I mean, knitting these tubes, it's many thousands of stitches. I mean, the yarn is worsted weight, and so it goes a lot faster than fingering. But I think, I think that one time we calculated it where I was like just working really dedicated um, on a scarf, and the most popular scarf that I sold was a Legend of Zelda themed scarf. And they, I think that the tube itself took around, I want to say 20 hours or like 19 hours, and 18 to 20. And then the duplicate stitching also took a super long time. Me saying that I feel like I, I'm doing it wrong. Maybe it was 10 and 10. That might be right. 10 hours to knit the tube, 10 hours to do the duplicate stitching. And yeah, so I haven't I haven't knit a scarf in such a long time. But I do have a couple um, completed bases, is what I called them, the, the tubes. Um, one in red and one in black. 
but the black one is in a Barocco wool that is a little bit itchier than I intended and so I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it I, I it would have to be for someone who like is not bothered by by wool I don't know why that one is a little itchier like I know I remember thinking like this is nice wool it's expensive and I think I initially knit it for Steve and then I was like man this is this is too itchy so I don't know but I do have also um, typically I do knit this in acrylic because it's easy to wash and also because of all the colors that are used it's easy to um, do little bits here and there which reminds me I do have my cousin Morgan's gloves he asked me to knit him a pair of gloves <laughs> I'm gonna see him in a week and I started the duplicate stitching and I forgot that when you put part of it is the way you knit them and part of it is the way your hand is but when 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 you put the gloves on versus when they lay flat so let's see so like these gloves because I knit them with the I don't know what the I don't know what it is because <laughs> like it's straight it doesn't twist but for some reason and I've, I noticed this I don't know what it is because I noticed this on the scarf too right like the scarf um On a scarf, the stitches don't necessarily go in a straight line. Like they might angle slowly in a direction. And so um, when I made the scarves, I would have to really consider the way that the fabric lays. And with the gloves, um, I did not consider at all where the fabric lays and I just counted the number of stitches and I went to town and I started duplicate stitching and I got um, the white mage it is mostly white and so I did that part first and um, Steve put it on and the image like curves around to the palm and so I have to undo that all of that work and it wasn't too much work but it was really disheartening and I don't want to undo it all and I don't love duplicate stitch the way that I used to now that I knit a lot more things so I also don't have as many colors because I because the yarn was acrylic and red is a really popular color among my former students so like all of my reds and blacks are um, now at schools that I have left yarn at and I need to go buy more I don't I don't often buy yarns anymore for like little accent colors and I just need to go get more I forgot I have one more finished object and it's actually multiple finished objects I have completed one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen of a different pattern and then I have a seventeenth seventeenth uh, um, halfway more than halfway done on the needles of washcloths so, mom, if you're watching and you don't want to see um, options for washcloths um, for Christmas, don't look. Um, if you uh, would like to look and see which one you prefer, um, which style, you can look. I don't care. They're washcloths. But I have so many completed washcloths. Since August. I started these in like the middle of August. They were so squishy. Squish, squish, squish. Um... So they are the grandma's favorite dishcloth um, standard pattern. Um, this yarn, wow, it's not coming in as beautiful on the camera as it does in person. There you go, kind of. This is a uh, sugar and cream. This is um, some cotton yarn I got from um, from Sow's ear. Uh, it's really cool because it is a just changing ball of yarn. So these are, it's the same yarn. It just kind of comes and goes in random variegations and they end up being all sorts. So I have so many dishcloths ready for Christmas. I don't know who I'm gonna give what colors to yet. Um, but I have so many requests for washcloths and now everybody can't complain because I have so many. I was thinking of giving maybe five a piece. Um, once I'm finished with whatever 
one I'm working on with this one. Um, I am going to switch colors, so I haven't decided yet what colors, but I will get to it. Actually, yeah, because this is really thin, I might have to hold it double. So this is some cotton yarn that I got from on clearance from a store. Yeah, so that is all my finished objects. Now let's talk about my works in progress. I only have two. It's already been a half hour maybe a little less because I had the camera just running while I was getting ready. Um, yeah, so I have two finished objects and one of them, yes, mom. <laughs> In my head, my mom's the only one who watches my podcast, um, is the weather or not scarf. So we're getting into like the last bits of the year. You guys, I have been doing this the whole year. Okay. I started in February, but I started it at January, even though I started in February. So this is where we've gotten. I seem to, th it seems to also get a little bit narrower as I have been knitting over the year. We'll see how it blocks out. And now here is, basically at the top is the end of October. So I'm going to show you September and October. Here is September. It looks like we had more days that were warmer than expected. And some days that were cooler. And one really hot day. Let's see. September 2019. Yeah, it looks like, so the averages in September for Minnesota, historical averages, um, start at 77 and by the end of the month end at 65. So there are a lot of days in um, the mid to lower 70s is the average in Minnesota. But we had, um, we had one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight days that were at, at about the average. And then um, it looks like we had more than half of the rest of the days in the 80s, which made for a very warm, very nice September, including one really hot day on the 17th, which would be this red right here. This crimson is actually the colorway, or yeah. So that's interesting. Um, it actually, yeah, it's really not that much different from August. But then we hit October and we are solidly, solidly in fall. I mean, this really indicates just how fall it was here. <laughs> Look at that. It was all over the place. So October we had six days that were at average. So October historically, um, we start at 65 as our average and we end at 50, about 15 degrees in the month. Um, but we had a chunk of days that were in the 50s, then in the 60s and a couple in the 70s. Oof. And then in the middle of the month, we had 40s, 30s, 40s. A couple warmer than average in the upper 60s, then really consistently in the 40s and slowly going down to the 30s. So I was pretty upset, <laughs> I should say annoyed, not upset, by the end of the month when I'm looking at historical average 51, 51, 50, and I'm knitting 40, 36, 36. Um, we're already part way through November and we've had um, it's chilly. Yeah, it's been much chillier. And um, the historical averages in November, and this was really surprising to me, um, start at 50, but quickly go to 49, and then end at 33. So that's a, that's a big dip, 17 degrees. Um, so in the 40s, and it's definitely not been that warm here. It's been chillier. And the way that my perception of Minnesota is, is that starting in November, it usually gets really cold, um, 30s probably. And then December is also like 30s. And then 
It can be anywhere from 30s to negative 25, but generally speaking, it's a little bit warmer. And then January and February, um, in my head, are very cold, which, if my perception is correct, it, it was very accurate this year. It was very, very cold in January and February this year. So yeah, let's look again real quick. Here is my October, or yeah, of September and October, whether or not scarf. We're really getting there, you guys. The Weather or Not Scarf is a pattern by Scott Rohr, who is actually a Minnesota native. I don't know what he was thinking in saying that or suggesting that the Weather um, or Not Scarf for Minnesota should be, uh, like, again, the ranges are so, so wrong. Like, if he had the purple, um, which is the coldest color, be for 14 degrees Fahrenheit and below, and it's like, it gets way colder than that. Like it would have been way, 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 way big chunks. And I personally like them a little bit more split up to really show the range of color, uh, the range of temperatures that we get here. So um, I might not have mentioned recently that I added a color. So on his samples, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. I added an eighth color um, in crimson and I adjusted the temperatures to a way that felt better for me. But even now, I would still tweak it to either include more colors, colors or break up the ranges. Because, for example, 30 feels nothing like 44, for example. Like, I think I would split up, move 30 maybe towards the colder, and maybe put between 40 and 50 or something. Um, or, like, that 60 degrees feels nothing like 74 degrees. That sort of thing but overall I'm super happy with it I only have a, like a month and a half left of this and then I'm finished I'm gonna I'm gonna block it and it'll be amazing the yarn that I'm using is a uh, holst garn which is a light fingering it doesn't say that but it is it's um holst garn uh, the yarn is coast and it is 55% lamb's wool 45% cotton and there's 383 yards per skein and I have plenty of most skein yeah so I'm excited to uh, when I block this like it's already soft but it's still it's a little crunchy um, so I'm excited to I hear that it looks amazing once it's actually blocked so I'm looking forward to it and my last oh no Leah come on finish uh, work in progress is a, it's not a test I mean it's a test knit but it's not a test knit anymore I feel so bad like I'm letting her down but um, I'm doing a test knit called the um, Pink Peppercorn Shawl by um, Julia, what's her first last name? Julia Parlette Carino, um, also known as Kalina Knits. And the pattern has been released, and um, I have not been able to finish the test knit. It is really slow going. Like, I started out really fast, and. Um, it has become harder. I don't know, like my fingers have been hurting a lot and the thicker yarn has been harder for me to work with. Um, I still have two and a half skeins left before I'm finished. But um, what I have so far is this. So, I mean, it's really, really cool so far. Um, so you start out at the bottom and you're knitting a lace um, sort of pattern. <sighs> That's really easy and um, <sighs> like really, I don't know, it's just really, it's very clever, it's very easy. Um, it's really um, easy to tell if somehow you're off or if you are not on a row, it all it all works out the more you do it. And you don't ever increase like this, this um, after you get past the setup rows, this section, always, the, this panel always stays the same. You don't add stitches, you don't remove stitches. Um, it always stays the same, same amount. And then, um, Steve and Noah are playing video games right now. 
Um, I think Steve is playing Control. He just started it. I can't remember what Noah's playing. Oh, he started on Untitled Goose Game after uh, Steve and I played it. But I don't know if that's what he's playing right now. But they are just being silly boys downstairs. Um, and then the rest of the pattern is um, bobbles. And then at the end, it will be there will be brioche at the end. But look at all these bobbles. Even though I asked for a sweater quantity of the yarn, um, there are a lot of pretty big differences in the skeins. So if you look at this first skein way down here, um, it feels like this first skein is more pink to me. And then the second skein has a lot of blue splotches. And um, I, starting where you see the first thick blue chunk, um, I started alternating them every couple of rows. Um, so that it would be less jarring but my two remaining skeins look like this so they are less traveled yarns in um, the colorway koi pond and it's light pinks with speckles it's a very complex yarn i really enjoy it um i actually for the brioche i I had picked out like a deep maroon color as the alternating, the secondary color, but I think actually I might want to do a white. Like I think this, I think it would soften this. And yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. It's, these are mini bobbles. These are only three stitch bobbles instead of I think five is the traditional. And they are fun. And then um, I have my little um, Xbox 360 controller as stitch marker from... Um, Simply Serving. <laughs> All right, 45 minutes-ish in, um, 40 minutes. I'm gonna get to the meat of uh, my podcast. So if you're not here for talking about yarns and about shop hops and traveling and stuff like that, you're free to go. However, I have some insanely gorgeous yarns that I feel like you would want to see and hear about Shop Hop. So, um, a little less than a month ago, I went to Madtown Shop Hop. So, Madtown, for those of you who are not familiar, is a, a reference to Madison. I believe that it more has to do with like the whole sporting thing. Like, people who are from Madison are obsessed with their sporting teams down there. Ben and Sean are not from Madison and they uh, do not uh, subscribe to that, but. They live in Madison, and so we see um, all of their stuff a lot. <laughs> so, Madtown Shop Hop. Okay, first of all, Shop Hop around here, the one that I go to, the Peep, peep Shawl Shop um, Shop Hop. It's not even a Shop Hop, I guess. I haven't actually done, like, the true um, Twin Cities Shop Hop, so I don't actually know how many shops are involved. But in Madtown Shop Hop, it's 13 shops, which includes farms and a mill and um you would get prizes based upon how many or you get entered to win prizes based upon how many shops you visited over the course of the weekend uh, the shop hop was friday saturday sunday and of course even though we were with ben and sean ben and sean totally agreed to come with and we're like absolutely we're going to visit all 13 shops it is mid-November, we haven't heard it, none of us have heard anything, so I'm assuming we, none of us won something, which is kind of interesting, um, based upon the fact that, sorry if my camera's shaking narrow, my cat is uh, bumping into the tripod. Um, so I'm assuming we didn't win if they did any sort of drawing, or maybe they're still recovering, I don't know. But, I mean, four of us visiting all 13 shops and... <laughs> It just seems really unlikely. I don't know. But not only did we visit all 13 shops, we legitimately went to, I think, five of them more than once over the course of the weekend. We set out on Friday with the intention of getting all 13 in one day. We only got to 10 before they clo before the remaining three closed. And um, t only 10 in a day. Which included actually saying, like, um, our first stop after Sow's Ear and Knit Circus was, um, 
the a llama farm and we obviously spent a significant time petting llamas and goats and uh, looking at a lot of things and oh my god it was so fun you guys and I believe there are at least a couple shops that aren't actually shops like they are on online only but they decided to open their shop for uh, the event and one of them in was Sun Valley Fibers the people who did the yarn of my gloves and oh my god I am so excited which reminds me I did not talk about one of my wits, which is fine because it uses the yarn that we bought in Shop Hop. And I'll just talk about that really quick. So the, one of the places we stopped at twice was Sun Valley Fibers. And they are located in like the middle of nowhere. They're just, they're a farm. Um, and um, I, I bought yarn for a sweater and Sean bought yarn for a sweater. And the yarn that Sean bought for the sweater, I actually started knitting the sweater. The sweater is the Hogwarts A History Sweater by Bad Girl Wolf Knits. If you haven't seen this sweater, it is, if, you, if you're a Harry Potter fan or if you know someone who's a Harry Potter fan, it is exquisite. <laughs> you, it gives you multiple different charts for the yoke for, um, for heat, um, like three to four layers with multiple patterns within that layer you can choose from and so Sean picked out uh the ones that she wanted me to knit for her and you guys this is gonna be my first full length sweater like this is a t-shirt and it's a crop and um Sean is as I mentioned in a previous podcast a much smaller person than I am and so I am she's like my guinea pig and she's totally cool with that and so this is what we have come up with I'm so proud of this, you guys. So here's the neck. Um, uh, there were increases with wrap and turns um, at the neck to help it sit better. I hope that they like, I don't, <sighs> so Corey of I Rock Knits uh, did a shawl presentation a few, a couple months ago. And she talked about how one of her, um, shawls was knit with wrap and turns and the person didn't resolve the wrap and turns and that really made me anxious because I don't feel like I understand wrap and turns maybe but I think they're resolved but I still feel like they're super noticeable so hopefully when I block that that'll that'll go away but let's ignore that for now and talk about Sean wanted lightning bolts and the snitch and the quidditch hoop quidditch goal and then um this is where we kind of go off of the off of the beaten path here she did not want any from chart c she just wanted like little stars so i took a couple from i took part of chart a and then this is where it's really off the beaten path this is the deathly hallow with stars so with color work typically speaking you don't want to be working with um two balls of yarn in the same row or more than more than two balls of yarn in the same row. Sorry, I had dropped a couple stitches uh, because it gets so fiddly. And I mean, if you look at the floats, you're c carrying a lot of floats, and I'm being really kind of messy with it because. So if a Sean, if Sean is 32 inches for her bust, and this is knit with about four inches of positive ease, I need a needle that's like 36 inches. I discovered though that needles are either 32 or 40 like I don't know why but for some reason that unless you're gonna buy the clover which I never I would I would sooner die um no offense if you like clover but like I like my needles extremely extremely sharp and clover bamboo is not sharp and I also don't really like working with wood at all either they get too snaggy um so if I'm knitting her this and it needs to be 36 inches but this needle is only is 32 inches around I'm like having to estimate having to guess at how loose I'm knitting to in order to make it so that it will fit her um so yeah I got these crazy floats um you see how much they were much neater in the beginning but I imagine when I block it see they'll they'll flatten out but I do that mean because I'm using three colors now that does mean I have some pretty big gaps and I'm, I'm just doing this how I want to. 
well, how Sean wants it. <laughs> if you are not sure about how your color work shows up on your sweaters or on anything, I guess, go look up Isolde Teague's explanation on on um, color dominance. It's a really short blog that has uh, visual demonstrations of it and it really helped me and be like wow that makes so much sense and so like you can actually see all of these none of them are getting lost in the background because and it's really simple like you don't really have to do it's just about how you hold your yarn which goes in front and or like which ones on like if your yarns are crisscrossing which ones in front and which ones in back and and why that shows up the way it does no narrow <laughs> So as I said, this yarn is Sun Valley Fibers, Golden Harvest, I want to say this is Mulberry, and I don't know what the white is called. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the white is called. And that's what I'm working on for Sean. It's really slow going right now. Oh my god, it's taking forever with, um, with three colors because I am just, I, I first of all, <laughs> I you know can please stop bumping into everything. I I can't knit in opposite hands. I just my tension does not uh, my tension does not work. Um, I sorry, a cat with a thousand nails just jumped on my a thousand very sharp nails just jumped on my lap. He knows he's not supposed to be there. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, and. So, because I can't hold it in opposite hands, I can't keep them from twisting, and I twist them con back and forth, and they just get tangled, and so, like, every, basically every repeat, I have to untangle them, and it's fine. I figured out, like, a system that works for me, but I do, like, one drop, two drop, nah, 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 one drop, two drop, and it's, it's fine. <laughs> other yarn I bought from Sun Valley Fibers are oh, a sweater quantity of this insanely beautiful blue. It is called Twilight and it is um, Merino Cashmere Nylon. Both of these are Merino Cashmere Nylon. I also bought some Golden Harvest for myself and this will go on, this will be the yoke for this sweater. I can't remember the name of it. I will put it overlay or in the show notes. Um, what sweater I plan on knitting with it. I have so many, so many sweaters I want to knit and I have no time. <laughs> Other shops that I visited during the shop hop, I got a lot of really amazing things for. Um, the I mentioned that we went to the, the, the llama farm and I got this yarn from the llama farm it is 300 335 yards and it is so squishy so squishy oh my god so squishy oh, i'm so happy about this um yeah it this is a natural this is just from one of the llamas the llamas are great like okay so my understanding of llamas versus alpacas was that llamas were cranky and spit at you and alpacas were dopey and um, soft and friendly. And in my experience at the llama farm and the alpaca farm, the llamas loved getting pet, especially if you had treats. And um, I will never forget this image of the owner of the farm calling for the goats. So the goats come running and these effing llamas come galloping up after them so excited for attention along with the goats and so it was great I want to go back there so bad I mean those those llamas were so much fun I have some really cute pictures of me with the with the llamas posing with me which is hilarious and llamas with their ears down or straight up oh, they were so adorable I wanted to buy everything from them um the alpacas only one alpaca wanted to be pet we weren't actually able to go in the pen with them um, and we spent more time petting the Great Pyrenees, that is their like guardian slash herd, herd dog, dog, 
he was white and he was so friendly and so adorable but he really wanted to protect those alpaca and only one alpaca wanted to be pet and he was so soft and so and they all they were really dopey but I didn't see any llamas get upset or spitty but the alpacas were spitting at each other so it's just saying um I did buy that little guy from the alpaca farm and I bought some inserts for my shoes from the um, alpaca farm. So I'm really excited to use these this winter. Sean bought a ton of them for gifts for people from both the llama farm and the alpaca farm. I also bought this yarn from Sow's Ear. This is a sock fingering yeah it's a fingering from it's American wool it's made for the sow's ear from sprout it's fiber seed sprout sock American yarn it is a um, 90 10 merino wool and nylon it's called pigs on the roof because the sow's ears like logo is the little knitting pig really like this how many, how many yards did I say this was? 510 yards. Yeah, you can do something with this whole skein. So the alpaca farm that we went to was called Galpaca. And I had to buy some of their little sport. Big, I don't know if I would count this as sport weight. I mean, I would say maybe more of a worsted weight. They said sport, but it's 200 yards. 70% alpaca, 30% merino. And it's like they're a little hand dyed. They just had a few colors that they were just doing themselves and it's very soft and very squishy. Look at this, look at this little boy. Look at this dopey little boy. Actually, he's probably a girl. I don't know. <laughs> We also got to tour a mill. So they have like a little shop in the front, but they have a mill in the back. And they asked, you know, they're like, well, we didn't plan for this, but um, you know, if you want to do a tour, we can give you a tour of the mill. And we absolutely wanted a tour of the mill. And the mill was so interesting and so cool. And like, you know, they had this crazy old, um, like stoves and, you know, Ben made some comments about how he was like expecting them to say that they, you know, these were the old stoves that they used to use, but nope, they still use the old stoves, old washers, um, and dryers, or they probably hang it to dry, not dryers, <laughs> come on, the old washer. And what they, um, they said that they're just doing some experiments with yarns, uh, yarn dyeing. And so they had this like deep, deep red naturally dyed yarn that was just hanging in a huge clump above this giant um pot and they said that the pot like i mean it was like huge they said that it was an old cooker a chili cooker from or maybe it was an old cooker from chili's the word chili came up and i think it was chili's like the restaurant and that they got it from them and that's what they used to practice their yarn dyeing um they said they typically don't do their own um that I mean, most of their yarn comes from people, and they um, they wash it and cart it and um, spin it for them, and then send it back. They usually don't dye it, but they do do they do keep have their own some in house yarns, and so I got three skeins of this wool. Wow. I would say it's really close yeah to the same color as my sweater oh this is much better back here so you see how it's slightly uneven it's I would call it more of a tonal um I bought three skeins of this it's a ton of yarn I can't remember how many um because it was like in this bulk bag and you could just select and they said that they were they were selling it um on clearance because of it being unevenly dyed but I bought enough for a sweater's quantity and um ah. and yeah so I got three skeins of this, and it's their their wool, their yarns. 
the mill was so interesting because the machines, <laughs> the machines, like the one carter was from 1905 and the other carter was from 1933 and I'll insert some pictures because it was just so, so fascinating and, um, you know, we, uh, people in our group asked, you know, about the future of carding, uh, of, you know, mills and, you know, they said that they feel like in 10 years they won't even be able to find the parts to fix their machines and it was a pretty gloomy prospect, but it was still very interesting. From Knit Circus, um, the yarn that they had for the shop hop was called Harvest Moon and so I got some on their Modernist base and the modernist is 80-20 superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards fingering. And of course I had to get whatever yarn we had for the shop hop. And then I had also ordered separately, but was given at the same time, which, so one thing I love about Knit Circus is because when I go there, uh, or that I can go there and pick it up directly. Like if I order something, I can ask for it to be held and I can pick it up instead of paying shipping. So. I got small sock yarn, or small, small foot sock yarn um, in this gradient, um, which is called um, Electric Mayhem. It's a stripey yarn. Um, two cakes of 100 yards and 80-20 merino nylon. So I'm really excited about knitting those. And then picked up <laughs> at some point our um so Anzala gave I think they gave a total of like three skeins of color and four skeins of non-color of the Lisa Frank colorway Dottie so I picked up one of each um so there's a miscommunication though so I had asked them to hold the yarn and Sean was going to pick it up so Sean went there and she said my name and they just gave her um, one of each and then later like a few days later they called me and they were like hey we're still holding your yarn do you want it still and I realized that they were holding two colored skeins for me I decided that I wouldn't hog every single yarn from the Lisa Frank colorways and I decided to get one skein of the color which is great and two skeins of the black and white I just really like this. It's so good, you guys. Like, it is so Lisa Frank. So Lisa Frank, and so it's Dottie. This, this is Dottie au naturel, and this is Dottie just Lisa Frank. So good. I have like a million other yarns that I could be showing you that I've collected over the last, however. Lastly, I got a skein of the Fresh Prince colorway. Did I show you this? I don't think so. The Fresh Prince colorway in Franzla. So I got a little suck bag. This is this is the like official logo for Madtown Shop Hop. It's the Madison Capital with a ball of yarn on it. Super cute. At another store, I got this was one of the stores that participated. It was Cat and Crow. And um, I, from the Cat and Crow, I got two of their local colorways. Um, these are just hand dyed by um, one of the owners. It's called Four, Four Crows Farm, 100% superwash merino hand dyed. Um, this colorway is 210 yards, one of a kind. I really like this. And then this one is Ocean. And that one is 470 yards, 100% superwash fingering. And lastly, I got from Spry Whimsy, another store that we went to, hand dyed in Stoughton, Wisconsin. It's called, or it's a Midori sport weight, 375 yards. 
Again, I don't think this, this does not seem like sport weight. It seems like fingering. So yeah, I don't know. I have so many yarns that I could show you. Like if you look over here, like I have so many, like um, over here we've got of that Georgia peach from, um, from Lola Bean up here. I got, I think it's called Midas from, um, from Diaris May Jackson Yarns. I got a couple new ones over here, a couple other ones that are really good over here. Um, this was a custom colorway dyed for me by, um, I cannot think today, um, by Malia Made It. Um, got some, I think that's Neighborhood Fire, um, these ones, this, what is this one? Knittily Things, Vesper Sock. This, this is Malia Made It. Got a couple of these. Like, all of these are new. <laughs> are newish over the last couple months. Um, yeah, I have so many yarns. Um, ooh, which reminds me. I got this from Middle Skate, and this is not actually from her. This is from a Japanese maker, but like, she stocks them in her shop. Um, I wanted both the, the female and the male, but only the female was in stock. This is from Jackson Yarn. Knitting rules everything around me. I got these from um, Gamer Crafting. Yarn Horde. Her. And... Keep crafting, keep gaming. Oh, drop some things. And I've got some really cool yarn up there too. I just have so much things. <sighs> Alright guys, I think I'm gonna stop it there. Um not really not gonna talk about life stuff this time. Hopefully I will just podcast again soon. Um I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and thank you so much for watching. Sorry if I went too fast and talked about too many things. Please feel free to comment, find me on Instagram, find me on Ravelry. Um, I really like to hear from you and make new friends. So, bye.